Now, you might be thinking, oh, this will just be one of Liam's ordinary vlogs of his gold DV presentation experience. Well, actually it's not. You can't use cameras inside St. James's Palace. <laughs> so I couldn't see the point in making a vlog building up to something that you couldn't even see. In fact, this is the extent of the footage I have from the day, going in, and one and a half hours later, coming out. So instead, I'm going to tell you what to expect if you have a presentation at the palace coming up. Video on. Right. On your invitation, you'll be given a specific arrival time and you'll be asked to wait in Friary Court in the groups which represent the room that you'll be in. I was in the yellow group, which was the drawing room, I think. I would say the best room to be in is the throne room because not only is it the most spectacular room, but you also get to walk through all the other rooms on your way out. You'll be in rooms of about 30 to 60 other Gold DV students, depending on the size of the room, and they'll all be from your area. So don't be surprised if you see other people from your group there, or other groups who also did it through the same centre. In fact, I did my Gold Award at Peter Simmons College with three other groups, all doing exactly the same expeditions, and there were two people from those groups also there that I had no idea were coming. You'll sit in that group opposite your guest, as will all the people in your group sit opposite their guests. Now, in terms of what actually happens, there are four main events, but there are DAV leaders from your area who lead the event and make sure you know what you're doing. There'll be a guest speaker. For me, it was Andrew Collins, the writer and journalist, who will dress you for around 20 minutes, so feel free to ask any questions that you like. Okay, quick side note, whilst editing this video, I thought I'd look up who the other guest speakers were at the presentation while I was there. So I had Andrew Collins, but it turns out the room next to me had Adam Hills the presenter of The Last Leg. I mean, no disrespect to Andrew Collins, but how cool would it have been to meet Adam Hills? And on The Last Leg, they've even spoken about the Duke of Edinburgh Award and Prince Philip before. I was reading more about Prince Philip this week because there was so much more to him than just the embarrassing jokes. He was smuggled out of Greece in an orange when he was... No, 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 no. <laughs> Anyway, back to the video. Then you'll all go up one by one to receive your gold DV certificate from the guest speaker. At some point, there will be a group photo with the people you are sitting with. In my room, there were two groups, so there were two photos. But again, this depends on the size of the room. But the main event is when His Royal Highness Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, comes into the room and addresses you and has a chat to you all. You'll stand in semicircles of your groups facing your parents and his royal highness will stand in the middle of that semicircle and address you as a group. He's very chatty and friendly and allows anyone to talk in the group as they wish. Now I didn't know this was happening until they mentioned it at the start of the presentation so I didn't know that it would be wise to come up with the best story from my Gold DV expedition as that's mainly the kind of thing he asks about. He may ask a question that relates to that story and you can stick your hand up and respond to it or it might be something else. He does like to ask whether you went overseas for your expedition or did something that wasn't walking, so that's a plus if you've done that. But it doesn't have to be like that. There was one girl who shared her story about how she got an injury on her expedition, she injured her hip, and her group had to share the entire weight of the contents of her rucksack because she literally couldn't carry anything. She also mentioned how she loved the clear skies during the night, and how some went in waist deep in a bog. She even asked the Earl of Wessex if he'd been in a bog. So, you know, anything goes. Don't be afraid, just speak. Once you do break the nerve of talking to His Royal Highness, he clearly knows how to respond and hold the room and in general he's a really good character and a really really funny man. I was actually lucky enough to meet His Royal Highness when he came to Peter Simmons College to open our brand new building as part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. My job was to walk him up from the lawn where there were loads of events to the building itself so I had a good few minutes to chat to the Prince and that was a super privileged job. I I'm so grateful that I got to do that and I got to speak to him then. So even though I didn't speak to him in the presentation, I wasn't really that worried about it. There was a video from that day he came to Peter Simmons. I will link it and credit it fully down below. I actually spoke in it. Um, I'd never really done any camera work at that time, so I wasn't very good at talking to camera, but I'll let you judge that for yourself. <laughs> Myself and the college were very privileged to welcome His Royal Highness, the Earl of Wessex, today to college. 
Anna and I have completed our gold Duke of Edinburgh award here at college. But anyway, His Royal Highness will come into each of the four rooms individually, but obviously he can't be in all four places at once, so that means every presentation is different depending on what time he actually is in your room. His visit might be the first thing you do, but it could be the last. For us, he started in the throne room next door, so we had time to rehearse and practice what to say once he came into the room, which was nice, but for those in the throne room, they were not afforded such royalties. The presentation lasts for about one hour and a half, but including the arrival and departure shenanigans with, you know, showing your IDs and getting your coats and stuff, it will probably be about two hours in total. Afterwards, you can take a generic photo in front of Friars Court. Literally everyone takes a photo there because that's pretty much the only part of St. James's Palace you can actually see. And of course, it's near the entrance and exit, so, you know, everyone takes a photo there. But don't forget to wander over to the official photo studio for the day, which is just around the corner, and that will be open until 6pm, so there's no rush to go straight after the event. In fact, you're better off waiting because it is normally pretty busy straight after the event. So I hope this has been useful to you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. I get notification every time there is a comment left on my videos, and I probably average about 0 to 1 comment per video. So you're pretty much guaranteed I will reply to it. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, I spent the rest of the day with my parents. Obviously only one parent can come into the actual presentation because you're only allowed one guest. But we went into the Churchill War Rooms to have a look around, which was really, really interesting. I've not been there before. And then we went out for dinner and then had a nice walk around the Thames. Before heading our own ways, they got the train home and I got the train back to university in Durham. And when I got back, I discovered it was snowing. Now, we only had about a centimetre that night, but two nights later, we had three inches. So I did what all good students should do and go out and have some fun in it. Ah! That will be the next video. Stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to. And I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if this was helpful.